Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid comes from Ball Team, your builder of all faith-based construction needs. Learn more at buildwithball.com. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Good morning. Welcome to Pinada Freight, Iowa Catholic Radio. Father PJ, good morning. Good morning, Father. Let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty, ever living God, we humbly implore you, Majesty, that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the great saints that also we commemorate in this week, Father, is St. John Bosco. Uh St. John Bosco, incredible and a remarkable saint. The church celebrates the memorial of St. John Bosco, 1815-1888. He was born in Italy and was the founder of the Salesian Society, named in honor of St. Francis de Sales, and of the daughters of Mary, helped of Christians. His life work was the welfare of young boys and girls, hence his title, Apostle of Jude. He had of no formal system of theory of education, but rather his methods, center of persuasion, authentic religiosity, and love for young people, he was an enlightened educator and innovator. Great inspiration for our, for our youth generations, but also for the priests, teachers that had been working with youth generations as well. Yeah, St. John Bosco is a, a terribly important um, patron for our Catholic schools and, and our Catholic youth groups, everyone who works with young people. And his, um, his model of discipline uh, really became... Um, integral, essential, right, uh, in, in the formation of modern school systems. Um, uh, it, it, it would be overshot to say he's the only one responsible for having corporal punishment sort of removed from schools, but he was a big part of it. Um, and, uh, and, and the whole notion of what today we think of as positive reinforcement largely came from St. John Bosco. Um, he's again, he's not the only one, but in, but in our world, he was probably the most influential. And he was working with very tough kids. Um, like this, we, you know, in our part of the world, um, St. John Bosco would be sort of like a father Flanagan from Boys Town. Like, <laughs> like he, um, and, and he could be tough when he needed to be because the kids were difficult, but, um, but, but, but he, his, his line always was lead with love. The children need to know that you love them more than you dislove, dislike the behavior. Um, and, and if the children know that you love them, it'll be easier to move them on to the better behavior. It's very interesting how, for current time, John Bosco is still be teach us how to educate our youth generations. If we focus only in the misbehaviors, misunderstanding, lack of following instructions, how we can help in them? How we can help in them? But that also including parents, Father. Not only the teachers, including parents. How this transition from children' life to to teenagers' life is a tough one for the parents. Well, and this is certainly a, a great challenge in our Catholic schools uh, because of the diversity of children that we receive. Here, I don't mean so much diversity of language or race or any anything like that. Um, but uh, you know, it's no secret that many of the families in our Catholic schools don't regularly attend mass. And so I have very different ideas about what, like what values are sort of are here. Um, this is, this is part of the difficulty in living in a very diverse society because uh, you can't like it, it, it doesn't work real well to have one set of rules at home and a whole different set of rules at school and a different set of rules still at church or something like that. And so, um, so I think a lot of this winds up being formation, not only of children, but of whole families whole family catechesis, whole family formation, um, that we're all continuing to grow uh, in, in our faith, hope, and love together, um, and, and that all of us need corrected sometimes. You and I correct each other and get corrected by the bishop, um, and, uh, and, and, and that shouldn't be threatening. That should actually be consoling, because it means that there's somebody who loves me well enough that he wants me to be better. It's, if we move in a little bit, 
about this uh, formal education method by San John Bosco, also the spiritual battle, the welfare battle that he was uh, drilling in terms of protection for these childs, and also for many people around the childs that wants to use the childs in a negative manner. So this spiritual battle also is an inspirational that everything in openly manner to the action of the Holy Spirit, I mean, give us forces to face those kind of misbehaviors, difficult understanding for our new generations. One of the things I think that often gets lost uh, when we talk about St. John Bosco nowadays, um, we, we always hit the youth thing, which is good and important, um, uh, but we, we, we miss the fact that John Bosco's life was really marked by a lot of death. Wow. His best friend died while they were in formation for seminary together. When he was getting the Salesians off the ground, several of his close friends died. He had a lot of death in his, in his immediate family. And, you know, he was running these homes for at-risk kids. Kids would die. Like, that happened on more than one occasion for him. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm grateful. I've buried teachers from my school before. I've never had to bury a child from the school. Um, I don't know exactly how I would do with that, you know? Um, but I think this is, this is what makes saints, right? Is that he, he took that experience of death and recognized that his faith in Jesus was as conqueror of sin and death. Wow. And so that Jesus could overcome even the death of his best friend, even the death of children under his care, even, even the death of those whom he loved best, which gave him great courage then in living his own life and facing his own death that he needn't, ultimately die. Wow. To me, it's very inspirational that somebody spend time with people, especially youth people, youngest generation, that cannot be respond immediately. You know what I mean? Because you're expecting right away, okay, yeah, response, no, okay, move this, quickly, okay, you have to do it this. This is the biggest mistake, the biggest mistake that we make with kids today. Um, how many particular sermons can you remember from your childhood, Father? Wow. <laughs> None, right? None. Nobody can. Maybe one or two or something. Really. Right. So, 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 so we, we treat each encounter with children, especially in church, as though this is the end-all be-all of everything they're ever going to experience, when the presumption is it's the pattern that actually gets established in the child, not the particular memory, because hardly any of us have real particular memories like that. John Bosco knew this well, and so he was really big on setting up regular schedules and good patterns. We eat at table every night at the same time. We do our chores every day at the same time. We do our lessons every day at the same time. We go to mass every day at the same time. And the, and, and the regularity of the schedule helps provide security for the child and for the grown-ups and allows those moments when we deviate from the schedule to be genuinely special, which they wouldn't be if you didn't have something standard to, to hold yourself to. Iowa Catholic Radio, be not afraid. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Next Generation Realty, a Catholic and family-owned flat fee brokerage serving central Iowa since 1994. Next Generation Realty can handle every step of the process of buying or selling a home. Learn more at nextgenerationrealty.com. Fast Signs is a custom sign and visual solutions company with an extensive selection of digital signage, interior and exterior signs, banners, and vehicle wraps. Learn more at FastSigns.com. Thank you, Fast Signs in Clive, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Knights of Columbus, Borman, and Pfeiffer Agency. Serving the Catholic families in Iowa, the Knights of Columbus is a fraternal benefit society providing financial security to members and their families. Specializing in life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability income insurance, and retirement annuities. You can reach Knights of Columbus Field Agent Gregory Waddle at 563-689-6801. That's 563-689-6801. Thank you and God bless. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Edible Arrangements, for their support, offering fruit bouquets and gourmet dip chocolate treats. On the go or have it delivered for that special occasion, ediblearrangements.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Ashworth Vision Clinic. Complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and urgent eye issues. 515-440-4610, ashworthvision.com.
Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. The feast of the presentation of the Lord, also it's part of this week. So, the presentation of the Lord, which occurred 40 years after the birth of Jesus, and it's also known... 40 days, Father. As 40 days, my... <laughs> thank you for the correction, Father. And Candle Mass Day. Since the blessing and procession of candles is included in today's liturgy. Founded by Pope St. John Paul II in 19, 1997, today in the World Day of Prayer of, for Consecrated Life, he attached it to Candle Mass Day because the consecrated men and women are to be the light in the world, imitating Jesus, the light of the world. The World Day of Prayer is moved to the following Sunday. So, so this uh, feast is very dear to me, um, and I, here's what my experience has been of this gang. So, you know, I grew up in a pretty devout family and going to Catholic school, and then was in college seminary at Loras. We had to have at least said the prayers for the feast. I had no notion this was a thing until I entered religious life. Like, I didn't understand this at all. Um, now, the Dominicans had some p- particular customs attached to Candlemas. Like? Um, well, the procession that's at the beginning of Mass, which we'll talk about here in a sec, was also extended at the offertory. Um, uh, but um, but then, after I after my time with the Dominicans, I was at the, the ordinary parish in Omaha, and, and the Episcopalians, the Anglicans, have a long tradition of this too, which is where the name Candlemas comes from. So that's Old English or Middle English. And it's Candlemas like Christmas. Right. So Christmas is the mass of Christ's day, Christ's nativity. Candlemas is the mass of the candles because it's the day that we bless, at least in principle, all the new candles for the whole year, except the Easter candle, which happens at, uh, at the Easter vigil. In history, this is really the end of the Christmas cycle. And um, in all honesty, the, the new calendar makes things kind of confusing with this three or four week period of ordinary time that falls between uh, the epiphany and, um, and whenever Ash Wednesday begins. Um, It it is a kind of a a liminal point. It's it's an in-between period. But the reason the dating or the the, the timing here is important is because the, the, the 40th day, the presentation of the, of the first male child on the 40th day is a custom that for the most part, Jews don't observe anymore. So this feast is usually confused with the circumcision of the Lord. Okay. So so most people think, and especially like when they pray the rosary, they think the presentation of the Lord is, oh, well, after Jesus is born, Joseph and Mary take him to the temple and they circumcise him. Nope. It's not that's not how it worked. So 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 the child would be circumcised on the eighth day after birth, and then the first male child would be presented at the temple. Because he had to be ransomed back. Mm. So this was commanded in the law as a memory of the Exodus. It was the way that the people kept the memory of the Exodus. So the firstborn sons of the Egyptians were killed, right? But the firstborn sons of the Jews were spared because they marked the lintel of the doorpost. And the, the offering of the lamb for the Passover was a kind of sacrifice. The lamb sort of taking the place of the child that would have died. Well, the, the family then was, was made to offer a tribute or, or pay a ransom for their child once, once the firstborn son was born. Once the temple was destroyed, this custom basically disappeared, though there are some communities of Orthodox Jews that will, will find a person whose last name is Cohen, because that name Cohen means priest in, in Hebrew. And so, so families with the last name Cohen are, his, are the historically priestly families amongst the Jews even to this day. There are some Jews that will find a Cohen and then and then and then offer them money as a, as a way to sort of pay back their kids. But the reason this is so important for Jesus is because, of course, the 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 the, the, the ransom is doing a different thing. It's performing a different function, and Jesus being presented in the temple, not in the local synagogue, and the temple in the temple dedicated to him, but unawares. So Jesus enters the temple and nobody else there realizes the priests offering the sacrifice don't recognize that the Lord to whom they're offering the sacrifice is now in the temple in the form of this little baby. But who does recognize it? Two crazy old people, church ladies, right? the altar and rosary society. 
Uh, <laughs> right? So, so they're the ones who recognize who's actually come into their midst. And so we have the prophecy of, of Simeon and Anna and, and, and the great song that St. Simeon gives us, which we recite every night before bed. But, but so this is a pivotal moment in, in the life of the Lord. In a certain sense, it's, it's the first time he comes and takes possession of the temple that is his. It's very interesting how you describe the older people in, in these kind of circumstances. It's funny, but believe it or not, their devotion is incredibly inspired for us. I mean, inspired to be consistent and persistent in terms of what do you do in terms of faith, you know? I am um, just before coming over to to, re to record here at the studio today, I was stopped by one of my Annas, right? A, a little Mexican lady who's on her way back to Mexico, but she she stopped at the church. Her last stop before going back to Mexico uh -huh. was to go to church to give thanks for the gifts that she'd been given and pray for a safe journey. And I know the moment she gets to Veracruz, the first thing she'll do before she goes to her family's home from the airport, where do we go? The church. To the church. Wow. And so, so these people, uh, we, we, you and I have a dozen Simeon and Annas at both of our places. Easy, right? Um, and, and, and it's part of the reason um, I'm very keen on this, especially at parishes with schools. The, the elderly people uh, in the parishes are really essential to, the, to sort of adopted grandparents for the whole rest of the parish. Not only for their own children and grandchildren, but for everybody else. And especially our immigrant families are often far away from grandparents. And so to be able to have those people right there as examples of what authentic holiness looks like in old age, um, uh, I, I think it's one of the most important things the church offers to, the, to society. And at the same time, it's a grateful people to God, expressing devotion and consistent presence at the church. Many of us are not a frequent visitor to the church as well. The theme of light is significant uh, because, of course, in Simeon's song, he, he calls the child a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And that's where the, the tradition with the candles comes from. There's also, there, there, there were some candle slash lamp traditions that, that, that were part of the original presentation in the temple. But it's important for us because candles are such an essential part of our worship and we seldom even notice it. The only time you ever notice the candles is when the kids forget to light them. <laughs> right? And they have to go say, altar boy, go, go light the candle, right? But, um, but, uh, but, 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 but candles are deeply significant. Both the lighting and the extinguishing of the candles are very, very significant. Iowa Catholic Radio, be not afraid. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Deary of Ames, home of warranty forever, offering new, used, and commercial vehicles as well as service and Mopar parts. Deary of Ames is located just off of Highway 30 at the Dayton Avenue exit and online at DearyAmes.com. Thank you to our business partner, Big Red Q Quick Print. Family owned and operated since 1980, Big Red Q Quick Print is a full service print shop ready to help you with all your printing needs with speed and accuracy. BigRedQ-Des Moines.com. BigRedQ-Des Moines.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Intervisions Healthcare, empowering men and women to make the most informed, life-affirming decisions for themselves and their families. Learn more at IVHcare.org. IVHcare.org. Thank you, Intervisions Healthcare, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for programming comes from Golden Rule Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, offering repairs, installations, and maintenance for the whole house, including heating and cooling systems and all things plumbing and electrical. Learn more at GoldenRulePHC.com. Throughout history, our Lord has shown us that He is truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. Experience these wonders for yourself as Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Vatican International Exhibition, Eucharistic Miracles of the World, at St. Mary's Catholic Church in Red Oak, now through January 31st. Learn more about how you can bring this beautiful panel display to your parish, school, or faith-based organization by calling 515-223-1150 or visit iowacatholicradio.com. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Father PJ, in this fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time, St. Paul, in the second reading, take it from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9, 16, 19, 22nd, and 23rd, describe interesting commission and mission. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, that is no reason for me to boast. For an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? 
that when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to, uh, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. See, I told happen. you, we correct each other. Happen, happen, Beautiful. happen all the time. So, first of all, call my attention how deeply assuming his commitment to spread out the word of God. He said in, in his own words, could be a, a little bit redundant, but he's assuming a high level of risk. He, uh, that, that, so this is a very important point, Father, and I, I think it's one that people often don't consider. The preacher always assumes a high level of risk. Minimally, he's opening himself up to the criticism that you're not being cons consistent with what you preach. And that's true every time, even for the saints. Like, there's nobody that's got this all together down, right? But more than that, and I think most preachers have had this experience, there are times that we know that we must prepare a homily for a particular occasion. I have a funeral, so I have to get a homily together for this funeral. Mm -hmm. And maybe I really want to, and maybe I don't, but I know that I have to, right? And there are other times, maybe approaching a particular feast, maybe in the midst of a particularly important moment in our own spiritual lives or something, where it feels like the homily is coming from someplace else. It's as though... It's as though this 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 burden to preach has been laid on me, and I can't not do it. If I were to not do it, I'd explode. And um, and, and so I think St. Paul is wrestling with this very dynamic, and he's willing to assume this great risk because he's known the impact this has had is in his life, and he can't stand the possibility of it not happening for other people. He knows he might not get all, but he's willing to risk everything personally to get at least some. Wow. This is a high call, and it's it, you know it's 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 a thing I struggle with a lot. I, I, I genuinely struggle with and, and work with, and I hope do well some of the time at least, and I know do not well some of the times also. Um, but uh, you know, is figuring out how to be present to, mm -hmm. how to um, uh, how, how to bring the gospel in places where it isn't. Um, uh, you know, part of the uh, part of the reason I tramp around Des Moines in my cassock all the time is because it makes me, like, I'm physically a witness in a way that I wouldn't be otherwise. Um, that's not always comfortable. There are times I would love to be anonymous, but I don't feel like I can do it. And Because and, 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 if I do, I'm somehow leaving out, I, I'm, 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 I'm unfulfilling a potential obligation. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding a potential encounter that could not only save somebody else's soul, but might save mine. And so, so I have to be willing for these inconveniences. One of the best examples I have of this, right, was um, uh, several Christmases ago. It was Christmas Eve day, and I was going to pick up the dry cleaning for the church that night. And as I'm going into the dry cleaners, there's a man in a Santa suit coming out. And he sees me, and he looks at me, and he smiles, and he says, uh, are you a real priest? And I smiled, and I said, well, are you a real Santa? Oh. <laughs> and he laughed. And he said, seriously, are you a Catholic priest? And I said, yeah. And he said, would you hear my confession? And so oh, wow. there in the snowbank outside the cleaners, Santa Claus knelt down and I heard Santa's confession the day before Christmas. And there was a kid at Lincoln who was in trouble. So he was having to rake leaves <laughs> and he saw all this happen and he caught a picture of it on his phone. It's still floating around the internet. You can't tell who it, you can just see a priest standing and a Santa kneeling receiving absolution from the priest. But that encounter led to a homily that Christmas. And we had people come into the church as a result of that homily, which would never have happened if I hadn't been, you see what's happening. So, so this is the dynamic that Paul's about. And it's the reason, you know, Paul continues to ply his trade as a tent maker and do other things. Uh, so, so that he doesn't have to rely only on other people for support and yet he's not afraid to ask for support when he needs it, especially for the sake of the church elsewhere. 
So this is why we priests should should never shy away from asking for money, so long as we really believe in the cause that the money is being sent for. Yeah. It's also why we as priests need to be attentive to live as simple lives as we can. We're not doing this to get rich. Don't trust don't trust Protestant preachers who who ply the gospel in order to get rich. If he's got a, a a plane that he flies around in privately, this is not a sign of God's goodness. This is a sign of a Absolutely schemer. Not. That's Absolutely that that, that you don't believe preachers like that. No, no. Believe the poor ones, the ones who put their money where their mouth is. Believe the ones who are willing to live with their people, uh, you know, and, 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 and who take spending time with and, people. and spend time Living with, with their people. people, live with their people, and who only take what's absolutely necessary to keep themselves and their own needs going. Absolutely. Uh, Paul's the first and best example of this, and, and, and this is how we all, uh, you know, at, le- at, le- at least voluntarily try to live ourselves. And it's incredible how you, in a remarkable manner, explain that because sometimes presumably high technology, best speakers, best microphones is enough to mm-hmm. catch the fish. That's exactly right. And not really. It's the testimony of life. It's how you disclose your experience in relationship with God that can be like a, a tactic for the people to say, well, I want to hear more from you, but especially more how the Lord has been touching you. I have a challenge for our listeners that I think will, will do great good for you as well as for your priests. Um, uh, people will often ask the priest how they're doing. They might ask, uh, how did you become a priest? We get that question a fair bit. Very few people have ever said to me, Father, where have you encountered Jesus lately? W- w- where are you meeting the Lord? Excellent. Ask your priest this question. Don't do it inconveniently, right? But but like, ask after your priest. <laughs> no, but like, no, but yeah, after the funeral or like on the door after church or something. But like at coffee and donuts, when you have them over for dinner, when you bump into them in the office or in the grocery store or something like that, you know, where have you met the Lord recently? Where's God speaking in your life, Father? How are you wrestling with the Lord right now so that I can make sense of him in my own wrestling with him? Um, but but don't be afraid to ask your priest about his own personal experience with the Lord, because that's got to be what drives his priesthood. And if it's not, you're even better for asking him because it's going to force him to get the help that he needs. We are approaching our ending program this time in a very interesting topic. So could you please send us with your blessing, Father? In the life and the passion of the Lord Jesus, the light of the world, the merits and the prayers of the Blessed Mother, St. Simeon and Anna and Joseph and all the saints, grant that whatever good you do or suffering you endure heal you all your sins, help you grow in holiness, and bring you to everlasting life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Be Not Afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Go forward and be not afraid. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid comes from Ball Team, your builder of all faith-based construction needs. Learn more at buildwithball.com.